This is a very special episode because mm-hmm. we have our great friend and guest, Chris Bonghead. <laughs> Yo. Uh, Chris, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. The first thing I always like to ask all of our guests is, have you listened to our podcast before? Uh, I have, actually. I listened to the first episode you Wait, guys did. Really? You have? Um, That's uh, a first. Well, well <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kelly uh, contacted me. Oh, like quick, sorry. Quick th- you got to keep the mic uh, one inch away. <laughs> okay, sorry. Inch away. I know it's fucking... <laughs> All right. right. You're good. You're good. Uh, <laughs> Kelly contacted me like a couple weeks ago and then told me about it, so I, I did a little research. Yeah. Sure, I watched the first one you did, or I listened to the first one you did, and then I watched the one that you guys had Cameron on uh, yeah. recently. Was it the pilot? I Where it was just me and Bill? It was no, maybe it wasn't that one. Then I watched the one. There was a musician on. You had a musician on. Musician. Did he have musician. blonde hair? I couldn't see it. I was oh. only listening to mm. it. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh yeah, Zach probably then. Right? Sandry Sand- would be yeah. my guess. Yeah, I don't know. Who can say? We've yeah. had so many reputable We're esteemed pumped, guests because nobody's ever done. That. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I th- yeah, I think you asked Cameron. And he was like, I-, "I know of it." Yeah. And then <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I did a little bit of research ahead of time. So I trust you've told all your friends and family about how awesome this podcast <laughs> is, and <laughs> and you're spreading the good news of hear nothing, see nothing, say nothing. I've told people. I've told some comics. But I don't really. Yeah, my family doesn't really care that I'm doing any. Oh, <laughs> apparently, say nothing's family really cared because he didn't want his last name mentioned, and I mentioned it right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's uh, like the very first line in the I'll first. Write him out. <laughs> yeah, that, that was his first words. Dude, I'll write I told out. you. Like one thing, don't say my fucking name, and what's the literally the very first thing that Phil did. Yeah. Anyway, Chris, welcome to the show. It's a pleasure to Thank have you. you here. Thank you for listening. Uh, We've got questions for you. Sure. Yeah. Let's start off with uh, what is your social security number? <laughs> uh, I, don't, I almost said it just because I like telling. <laughs> I, I, I like being nice. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if someone asks me a question, I like. I don't. I don't like having secrets. Right. No, no, it's it's a you're you're avoiding the topic. <laughs> right. a, yeah, that's what I'll do instead of lying. Quit beating around the bush, Chris. What's it's, your social security it's number? A number of digits. Arranged per- in an order. <laughs> I don't. What did Cameron say? Something very say. similar to that, actually. Yeah. Like, it's yeah. it's a number. It's a series of numbers. Um, it's five, ten. You know, you know, like when the little rascals try to take out a loan. <laughs> seven. Do uh, does anyone ever answer that question? Would you? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Honestly, this is only the second time we've asked it. So yeah. <laughs> okay, so you try. So that. we're batting zero for two right now. But that's, that's really funny. That's all right. Uh, what can you tell us about yourself? Like, what is? What is Chris? What is Chris? Who is Chris? Chris Why is Chris? Is uh five foot five and scared of everything. Yeah. ASL. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm 31. I'm a male, as far as I know, and I'm located right now in Villa Park. Nice. So okay. I mm-hmm. remember that from back in the AIM days. <laughs> I, I am a stand-up comedian. Um, uh, I'm around the area. I just yeah. started though. I'm like super new. Yeah, I was gonna say. Um, so I know Chris because uh, he's good friends with my fiance, who we partied I think three times, two times at your uh, uh, New Year's. Yeah, and have a big New Year's party every year. Yeah, it was funny because I told Kelly to ask you about the podcast because she's more friends with you. She's like, "No, that's that's weird. I haven't <laughs> talked to him." And I'm like, "It was fine." I'm like, "I don't remember." What we did on New Year's because I was high as fuck. <laughs> like, <laughs> so why? <laughs> yeah, everyone's everyone's fucked up at those parties. Like, hey, I, I, hey, do I know you? Are you the right Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Have I been in your house, sir? <laughs> so, but but yeah, and then I went on a, a comedy group thing on Facebook, and I'm like, oh well, this guy got nominated for best suburban upcoming comedian. Right. Ooh, like, ooh. What? I know that guy. What? Yeah. yeah was, Tell us more about that. Uh, they, the comedians out in the burbs, they have uh, a ceremony <laughs> they do for each other every year. They call it like a big jerk off ses- session <laughs> where they just compliment each other. And, uh, I guess this year, um, I got nominated for best up and coming. So, which is really cool. Cause I, my, my year mark is actually next month. So next month in December, I'll be uh, having done stand up for like a year. Okay. And what inspired you to uh, take on this new passion Man, pastime? I, I always lie on podcasts when people ask me, but mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going to tell the truth on that. Oh, uh, I was going through a divorce. Oh shit. So uh. like, and she couldn't move out for like three weeks. To oh a my month. God. So I was like, I need to get out of the house every night. And I had tried it once before and I was going to kind of stop because I was joining the military. 
Um, but after that, I was like, no, I need to get out of the house every night. So I just started doing stand up constantly. That's interesting. That's a good outlet, though. It, well, it like really was. Honestly, it was a great way to deal with stuff in the in the short term. And then long term, I just ended up really liking it. So I stuck with it. So do you have a lot of material then based around like relationships and divorce? Or is it far, <laughs> far, far from that? I think initially I had like two jokes about divorce. Uh, but then after that, I kind of like thought it was kind of hacky to keep doing it. So I... Uh, it, re- it reminded me of... Because uh, we went to Drunken Donut like a week ago. which uh, is, an, uh, uh, is that the Shots and Giggles show yeah, that right, Cameron show. hosts? Or? And, there, and there was a guy, the... the the ending, the closing guy, I forgot what his name was, but he's like, yeah. Uh, Fernandez, I think. Fernandez? Yeah, yeah. Fernandez. yeah, yeah. Yeah, he, he was, uh, what do you say about like, when you, when you he, he, he said he got like a lease with an uh, ex that he was, uh, I think, trying oh, to marry. Yeah, he had the, he was stuck with her for yeah, a while. That's for what he like, said. He's yeah, like, it's like God. living with a nude uncle. He's <laughs> yeah. just trying to <laughs> avoid them yeah. in every room. <laughs> yeah, it was, uh, that w- <laughs> I could relate to that one a lot. That was awesome. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, it was a really good show. They 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 put on a really good show, by the way. Shots and giggles. So yeah, I mean, you were there. I, was that the first time you guys were there? Because I ran into you that that night. Yeah, no, I I went there. I think two times before, mm-hmm. because uh, it's it's weird. I well, I did a I tried so um I used to be in a band for ten years. Right. And the some, complex. Yeah, I remember. And um, somebody we got. I I don't even know if I should mention. You know that old bastard on a radio show. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I feel like you've already yeah, yeah. mentioned him so <laughs> yeah, many know. times. Let's just drop a bunch of names yeah, yeah. for people. So you know what I'm talking about, yeah. Flabby. Yeah. Well, he 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 booked a show for our band, and I I was just starting out. I'm like, holy fuck! There's somebody wants to book us, and he put this horrible fucking lineup together. It was, you know, uh, like a take my wife please. 70 year old guy dressed up in a smiley face oh, opening up. <laughs> then us. <laughs> A uh, uh, tree hugging hippie band, and then uh, like a violent, like motivational hardcore band. So motivational. It, so they were motivating you to do violence. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like fight. Uh, yeah. Fuck drugs. Just fight instead. Fight, but be cool about it. Be positive. Yeah. Like like, like uh, a <laughs> ha- hate breed or something. You know. Oh, hate breed. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so uh, so any anyways um so I'm like fuck if this old dude can do stand up the you know the seven year old smiley face guy I'm like fuck it I'll try it out and. I um I actually w- fucking w- weird as hell I did a um, uh blue line laughs. I haven't heard and of that one. Is it where is that? Th- it used to be I I th- uh, from what I've heard it used to be happening all the time and it was crowded as fuck but mm-hmm. it's kind of died down cuz the guy who hosts it moved but uh-huh. it was by independent it was in independence tap I think. Uh-huh, okay. And it was like once a month and it was pretty much like an open mic, but it was like usually all comedians, kind of like a place to just uh, riff and yeah, work on shit. That's a lot of mics in it now. Yeah. And I was on it with, uh, it was w- weird, the few times that I did it, I was with John Torres and Cameron, which were like- Oh, John Torres is cool. Yeah. yeah. They're they like my favorite there. And then weird thing, fucking Rena was there too. Really? Uh, Rena Calm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was like, like she- like. That that's when I decided I'm like I don't know if I should do this anymore because these are professionals. You know, like <laughs> yeah, but everyone starts somewhere, man. Exactly I, yeah. right. I, I'm trying to get you back into it. Do you do stand up, by the way, Bill? I do. Yeah. How long have you been doing it? I performed for the first time in 2014, oh. and then my average was two shows a year. I would do two shows, and then people encouraged me to do it more frequently yeah so now i'm doing a show maybe every other month every two months that's awesome it's I, it's a hobby of mine but i feel like that's a it's a very generous term um, <laughs> like i i know i'm i'm one i'm not very good two i have no marketing strategy so the only time i ever perform is when i'm invited to go on showcases interesting which happens about is that a, mar- a bad marketing strategy or just being pompous that only when I'm invited. Maybe. <laughs> well, <laughs> you are being invited onto these showcases. That's good. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, no. um, I, I, a little of both, I guess. Um, it's just easier. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I know. <laughs> like, I don't I don't care enough, I guess, to get out there. So, I don't really do the open mic scene. I don't really network or Because you might end anything. up like, oh, I'm looking for open mics, and then uh, go to some place that's like, you know, some nursing home bingo night yeah. <laughs> well I, you there are know, some weird places <laughs> it's, it, and you know there's no shortage of open mics it's just i don't need to find myself at bars 
any more often than I already am yeah, at yeah, bars. Yeah, I feel, <laughs> I feel yeah. you. you know, I feel like that that would not be a good addition to my life. So a good marketing strategy would be the the amount of times you go to bars is to just scream in the middle of you there and go, "All right." I'm doing stand-up right now. Yeah, you know? everyone, listen to me. <laughs> I'm funny. That could be your thing. Like, you just do it spontaneously. Yeah. No, 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 you know, tickets ahead or anything. Right. <laughs> you ever hear of a, a bar in Chicago called The Land? No. They do this yeah. mic called the soapbox. They don't give you a microphone. You stand on like a soapbox <sighs> platform and then you scream your jokes to people at the bar. Oh, so man. it's exactly what you're describing. I did it one time when I was in the city. Was it as humiliating as it sounds? <laughs> it was like I, I felt like it was some kind of weird fever dream where I'm just, or like I'm having a mental break. It, from the outside, it looks like you're having a mental breakdown. It doesn't look like <laughs> you're doing stand-up because you're just yelling at people and everyone's staring and you're just there's no microphone. It doesn't look like you're supposed to be there. Is there a spotlight at all or are you just standing? No. Oh, in the just, dark just, it was not dark but like it's just regular lighting there's no spotlight and then people are walking past you it was like the weirdest experience oddly enough i did not do well there <laughs> like well, weird you know that is weird it was super weird that, I, that'd I be funny that. if they made like the comedians who are very uh monotone do that yeah that's how they have to scream yeah that's how i am i have a very deadpan delivery a lot of the time so it's very subtle so if i'm not like I'm, it's weird to scream my jokes it doesn't make any sense for did me. you did you did your voice start cracking near the end uh no maybe i probably started getting like super nervous because <laughs> like, this is like super and it's not that they didn't have a microphone because i saw them have one they had one like behind the bar and i was like just bring that out of here man right come on <laughs> come on it's like a godfather scene it's behind the toilet you gotta Bring yeah. it out on everyone. That was so weird. It was a cool place. I'd probably do it again. <laughs> <laughs> why not? Yeah, why not? Where Where is the land? Do you recall? Um, no, I don't remember. Honestly, it was a while back. So you you live in Villa Park. Do yeah. you find yourself in the city of Chicago very much, or uh, not often? I've been trying to get out there more and more, just because. But the mics aren't as fun for me, honestly. Why is that? In the burbs? Yeah, no, out in the, in the city. Oh yeah, I feel like yeah, there's a yeah. little bit of more of like camaraderie out in the in the burbs. I mean, I'm super new anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Like that's probably a lot of what it is when I'm out in the city anyway. But uh, I feel like people kind of hang out more in the burbs, even if you don't know each other. Yeah, well. yeah. I was gonna say that that's what I was telling Cameron that I feel like, you know, specifically about. I mean, I haven't been to a lot of places, but like like shots and giggles, for example, you go there. And it doesn't fucking matter what kind of comedian. You could be yeah. some, like, 50s comedian. You could be some, like, the edgiest fuck. And right. people kind of, like, so, you know, they try to relate to you and laugh. Instead of, like, when I, when I went to the city and I did a few stand-ups, it felt like people are doing everything they can to not like you or there's like it's a competition you know yeah plus there's so many out there there's so many comics yeah. out there and stuff like that so everyone's like super mega jaded you know yeah whereas out here it's a little bit weird to see comedians still yeah so which is kind of funny to me because when you think about it uh when people go on tour or anything you know, the people that you see in burbs and shit who aren't competitive and jaded, yeah. that's what the rest of the U.S. is. It's not like this, you know, really? clicky Chicago. I mean, oh, that, well, you're telling me that like New York and L.A. is in... Well, not, no, no, <laughs> not New York and L.A., but 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 other parts, you know what I mean? Like like where? A everywhere, every other major city that isn't New York, L.A., Chicago, and like Portland. Yeah, It's sort of like, y you know, is this guy funny? And that's all that matters rather than... You know, like rather than uh, you know, well, what do they stand for? What do these jokes promote? Type right. shit, sort of like some kind of agenda. <laughs> do you get what I'm saying? No. Yeah, some people have like some kind of something they want to say about stuff like that, and yeah. I feel like uh, I think it's encouraged in a lot of circles and stuff like that, just because uh, it's important mm -hmm. to say stuff. But I have no agenda. <laughs> I yeah. got nothing. I tell like spider jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not super deep. <laughs> Well, see, well, yeah, that's what I think we were talking about earlier about being hacky is like, I just like, like, especially because of the way environment is, it's it's a little bit better to just be generically goofy rather than like make fun of this type, like a certain thing that right. may offend people. And I think that, oh, well, if you start being goofy and people are like, well, you're too fucking, you know. Cent well, centrist or some or, or, or right. you, you know like this is this is hacky to me or something like well, this is, i I've don't want to hang out with those people anyway yeah yeah <laughs> i like being goofy <clears throat> it's, it's fun plus it, it, uh, every, comedy is kind of like an escape for me i don't want to talk about anything super mega serious yeah i like i want people to laugh mm -hmm. you know and i also want to laugh so i don't like when people get super you know like super into what they think 
uh, America should be like right now. Or yeah, yeah. Like that. I, I would say that for a different kind of platform. Although I appreciate when people do. And I, I'm just in general, I don't know anything about politics. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> S- same here. I I hate it when people ask me shit about. Like first, first off, people say, "Oh man, Trump jokes are so hacky." Yeah, because it's an easy fucking target. It is. Se- second of all, it's like, I uh, I don't like. I don't know anything about politics, and I think he's hilarious because I don't know anything. Because he just reminds me of like a wrestling guy, you know. Well, he when, was he wasn't wrestling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, uh, it, like, like, and and I didn't see that until like a year ago. But he, but even before that, it just he just seemed like Vince McMahon to me. You know, it's like right. It's like when when he, when he says, "Oh, we're gonna get a, it's gonna be a cage match, no holds barred. Oh, we're bringing down the wall, all right, you know." <laughs> yeah. And then like we're gonna have folding chairs. Oh, you you want ice? All right, it's two words for you. Suck it, you know. Uh, yeah. It's just like <laughs> it's wrestling to me. Yeah, it, it's he. I mean, he's from a reality TV show, and that's what we're getting. So yeah. That's about as much as I understand what's happening. Mm-hmm. You know. What are you? What um? I think we, uh, definitely since you're a stand-up comic and. Going like do do you have any like uh, influences or uh, anybody you look up to? Uh, I like love top three or something. Mitch Hedberg, uh, he's like probably the oldest comedian I really like. Mm-hmm. Um, but then right now I'm really into John Mulaney. He's been really super funny, and yeah. Tom Segura, he tells really good stories. I really Dude, like him. he's my number one favorite. Really, oh number one God. favorite. Tom we're we're, uh, we're gonna go see him in uh, April. Me, oh really? Me, Bill, and yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cool. Yeah, he's uh, his last couple of specials were amazing. I'm kind of hoping he'll do another one soon, but we'll see. Yeah, I couldn't believe I couldn't believe it because like they had all these uh, out of nowhere, out of all these stand ups on Netflix, and one yeah. day I'm just like clicking through, and I'm like, oh, who's this fat guy, average looking guy <laughs> with a beard? He does. He, he, he didn't even dress up for his special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think he just wearing like jeans and a, a t shirt. Like, yeah. He looks like a jaded like a mechanic, you know? Yeah. <laughs> which is which is weird. John Mulaney, he wears like suits. Yeah. But then I saw him on a show like from like 2014, and he was wearing t-shirts and jeans too. And like that's so weird to see him not in a suit. Mm-hmm. It was very very strange. So I mean, I guess everyone kind of I don't know if he found his style later on. I always think about like what I'm supposed to wear on stage. You know? Yeah. Uh, what am I What am I trying to communicate? I have I have this conversation with my buddy all the time. When I first started, I was doing what I thought that comedians wore. I wore a blazer all the time because mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought that's what. Yeah. <laughs> that's the uniform. <laughs> I've heard that <laughs> I've heard that shit out there's like 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 time periods where like what what is it like the 90s everybody had the huge uh, shoulder pads yeah. in, the, in their blazers yeah so for the first like two months I was wearing a blazer for sure <laughs> but blazers are timeless you can't go wrong with a I blazer I still like them but now I'm like oh if they see me in that they're gonna kill me you gotta update it it's gotta be like a you know like like a, a tie dye blazer right, or, yeah. or like you know fuck you everywhere like <laughs> Conor McGregor you know? yeah a custom blazer of some kind I wanna have a, a stand up party where I make everyone wear a blazer ooh that'd be fun I think it'd be ridiculous besides you besides no I'll <laughs> wear one <too. laughs> fuck you guys <laughs> you guys are also hacky but if you don't bring it you have You'll get one supplied to you, and it's not going to fit. Oh. <laughs> How a many blazers? Blazer drive, you know? yeah. How many blazers do you have? I, I only have one, but I'll oh. go to the thrift store for the, this party. <laughs> that's commitment. <Yeah. laughs> um, so have you been outside of Illinois or within Illinois? Like, where's your favorite place to perform? Uh, Perform-wise, no, not, not outside of Illinois. Um, but most of the mics, like, there's like, a, there's like three mics I hit up all the time okay that's uh mojo's in plainfield that's on tuesday mm-hmm. um and then uh thursday is josephine's um which is my it's the first mic i ever did and then uh there's sunday at oasis which is in west chicago and then uh, there's a couple mics on wednesday including one that i just started with my buddy uh tj at lunar brewing uh that's in villa park so we uh we started doing that one and it'll be um the second one will be this coming wednesday so nice how's it going how's the first one the first one was awesome everyone came out and showed a lot of support and it was a it was a really good room it, nice and uh hopefully the second one will be <laughs> still yeah. good and it, the first one's always good that's why this yeah. is my understanding so i'm hoping that it'll just kind of stay at least somewhere like sure. that. that's really cool and the brewery obviously is receptive to it was the yeah were the clients there like the customers did they get into it or was it like what the fuck is going on in my brewery they did they did um it was just surprising because i don't think they usually do i don't think they ever really do comedy there mm-hmm. it's mostly kind of like bands every once in a while so um but 
every all the all the the customers and stuff like that we talked to them a little bit before we started it and everyone seems super pumped about it and uh, everyone's been super nice so far outside the comedians so it's been awesome nice and you're hosting it yeah we uh we host it together uh, me and my buddy uh, tj remick and uh we do kind of like we both get up on stage at the same time okay because we're dorks no i'll work uh <laughs> i'll work I'll, I'll work music i'll i have my little synth Okay. But I do music for in between comics and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, it's what, a, like a Korg? Yeah, it's uh it's an ovation circuit. Ooh. It's an ovation circuit. Um so what that sounds of? like a cult. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'd, I'd, I would follow that cult. That thing's awesome. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a portable synth that you can like write on the fly and stuff like that. It's battery powered. Nice. And then it sounds oh. it sounds super cool. Yeah. No, well, I also do music as a I'm okay. Like, yeah, I'm a musician. I keep forgetting that I'm a musician. <laughs> Stand up musician. Uh, yeah. Are you the best up and coming musician in the summer? No, <laughs> absolutely not. It was like totally such a, a culture shock for everyone to be super nice to me when I first joined and everyone said it's like uh, you, they thought I've been doing stand up for a really long time mm-hmm. or at least a, a year or two. Uh, which was surprising because, like, when I first started playing guitar, no one says that shit. You're, you're like, no, no. When you first start playing guitar, no one's like, oh wow, you've been right. playing for a couple of years. They're like, please stop. Well, yeah. <laughs> with the guitar, it doesn't matter like how confident you are, like how right. good you feel. Like you can't really fake it. It's right now, like, you can't fake it. Hot yeah. cross buns. Yeah. To be fair, I have a bunch of public speaking experience from being uh, a musician. Okay. So that was that was helpful in the like transition to doing stand up. Yeah, I, when when I was in the band, it was so much easier to be on stage because right. when i do stand up i'm just so fucking shaky and like yeah i don't blame you i was like i was like that the first time too plus it's weird not to have a guitar in your hand yeah you know yeah and about? the whole room is silent <laughs> yeah yeah the whole, and there's no one with you on stage and there's everyone's just, looking, yeah, at you. And, yeah, they're looking, I, looking at you i look at like some old videos because i was you know like in a psychedelic tree hugging hippie band and like i just realized how like we're playing the chillest wall of sound song but i'm like spastic as fuck yeah <laughs> to, to this, you know <laughs> which would make it look even funnier because i would like bitch at my band members like why the fuck don't you get into it why don't you get and, and so it would like look like i'm on some serious drugs you know right <laughs> this guy definitely is the guy with the problems you know? right. <laughs> oh man like every musician problems yeah um so next question uh what are your f- top Three favorite Three Six Mafia songs. Oh, good one. I don't think I know that. It was Slab on My Knob. Is that one? Is that a Three Six yeah, Mafia? Yeah, it sure song? is. Then that one three times because that's okay. the only one I know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Slab on My Knob and two I'm different the, remixes. Yeah, and two different remixes of it. Uh, I actually do really like that song. No, I'm surprised. <laughs> yeah. I think it's ridiculous. Yeah. I think any dirty song is ridiculous. Uh, fun fact that's actually a uh, Beatles cover. <laughs> yeah, the Beatles wrote the original. <laughs> Slab on it's my like knob. a weird Johnny Cash scenario. <laughs> I always he like sings a song I think is his, and it's like a Nine Inch Nails song. I'm like what the? Yeah, fuck? <laughs> I thought you wrote that, right? Yeah, uh, super bizarre. That's have funny. Have you ever thought about combining your passions like music and comedy? Like, I just started to recently. Just okay. Because I'm trying to do it in a way that I'm not ripping off like Bo Burnham. Okay. He did it, and then uh, Dimitri Martin does a lot of guitar stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm trying to pull away from doing that because I don't want it, I don't want anyone to think I'm like stealing their thing. Uh, all I got right now is an impression of uh, Beethoven. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's it, just okay. <laughs> it's it's just it's stupid. Uh, it's basically just me playing a Beethoven song and then talking about sluts. It's yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because in my head. Like back in the day, like classical, like a pianist, those were like the rock stars of their time. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, in my head, they were just doing it to get laid. Sure. <laughs> yeah, you know, like any other musician, right. or Whatever. So I, that's. So what is Beethoven? Do? What did you say? You want to fuck? Yeah, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to come home? You and me? No. Ah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, stupid shit like that. That's my impression of Beethoven. Well, well, that's what I'm saying. He wouldn't hear it because he's like, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> All right. Yeah. Are you down? That's what? Right. The syphilis totally took away his uh his. Oh, is that it? Yeah, it was syphilis. Yeah, so, so he was. I mean, it's. I'm pretty. I think I'm on the. <laughs> I'm right on the money with this one. Yeah, he got syphilis, and then uh, I think it's what causes hearing loss because he wasn't born oh. deaf. Oh, he got syphilis. That I believe, and then they did not tell us that in music class in elementary school. Yeah, That's they, interesting. They tend to opt uh, out of the cool parts of actually. <laughs> <laughs> <you know? laughs> dude, he was just crushing poon back in the day. Uh, yeah. Oh, I do powdered that powdered wig of his. He like, was crushing poon. Oof. They never. Well, did you that. did you ever hear about why they have uh, powdered wigs? Oh. Right, so 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 two old school facts because you mentioned the soapbox thing too. I heard they have powdered wig because that was killing away lice. So people would shave their heads and then they put the powder to like because there was like a medicine in there to get to well, like ward away bugs. 
Huh. And then the other and then the other thing about soapbox, what I thought was fucking crazy that I I was like so yes, I have another excuse about when people get nervous doing stand up, why they get all shaky. And I heard that that's a kind of like nature versus nurture genetically passed on thing from back in medieval days when they would uh burn you at the stake and put you up like at your last time to sort of like no i'm not a witch i'm not satanic <laughs> i have not been doing the and and the whole town is watching you kind of like a uh, holy grail you know mm. That's so I, 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 I don't you, know. You said it with the microphone in front of you, so it looked like you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am not a witch. <laughs> yeah, guys. So dating's weird, and <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm about to get into a set. <laughs> yeah. I have born parents. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be my thing. I'm not a witch. There you so, go. yeah. What is the you know what's with these? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's that's the jokes write themselves, right? Like, and yeah. yeah, no one's doing witch jokes, so you should jump on that. Yeah, right. Un unblazed trails. Yeah. For you. Market for you know what's sure. you know what's really weird. I'm not gonna mention his name, <laughs> but now I worked with a stand-up guy who moved here from fucking Hicktown, Nebraska. Sure, and he another one of those cities where the comedy scene is much much nicer. Oh yeah, more friendly. Yeah, Hicktown, exactly. yeah. yeah, Hicktown. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> so, so he, no. The funny thing was that he was. T- uh, you know how you're talking about like what you should wear and like you, you got to figure out like kind of your character and your swag or whatever. He was telling me that I look scary so that I should have jokes about me being a pussy because people are intimidated by me. And then the funny thing was I would tell him ideas for jokes and he said, no, no, that's shit, that's shit. And then he'd take my jokes and then later on I'm like, wait a minute, aren't you doing the same thing? Except you're being a pussy because you are one. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. It was that's weird. So he came from Nebraska? Yeah. The comedy capital of the world? Yeah. You know, I, I dated a girl recently who lived in Nebraska and she wanted me to move out there and I'm like, "Oh man, I don't I just I want to do stand up." She's like, "You could do stand up out here." I'm like, "No, I don't I don't yeah. think so." <laughs> <laughs> I think Cowbell. people move out of Nebraska towards Chicago to do stand up. Right. Yeah. Not the other way around. <laughs> Get fucked up, dude.